Welcome back everyone to another video on Bessel's equation and Bessel functions. In this video we're going to be looking at Bessel functions involving half integer orders. But before we start I want to go back and review the relevant results from the previous video about gamma functions and the video before that where I discussed the Frobenius method and introduced Bessel's equation. I'll put links in the description. The first result I want to review is from the gamma function video. It's something we found near the end where we showed that the Bessel function of the first kind of order p could be written as x to the p times the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k divided by 2 to the power 2k plus p times 1 over k factorial gamma of k plus p plus 1 times x to the 2k. The second result I want to review is from my Bessel function and Frobenius method video where I show that j sub p is the solution to Bessel's equation corresponding to the positive root of its indicial equation whose roots were r equals plus or minus p. So in this case the positive root would be plus p. The third result I want to recall is again from the Bessel function Frobenius method video. This result says that if my differential equation is being solved by the Frobenius method and the roots of my indicial equation differ by an integer, with y1 being the solution that corresponds to the larger root of the indicial equation, then the second solution y2 is given by c times y1 ln x plus x minus x0 to the r2, so the smaller solution to the indicial equation, times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity a n times x minus x0 to the n. Note that x0 here is just the point that you expand around which is 0 for Bessel's equation. And c here is an unknown constant. Now with the three results recalled from the previous video, let's start deriving the equation for Bessel functions of half integer order. And by half integer order I mean that this p over here is 1 over 2. And if p is 1 over 2 and I start solving Bessel's ODE, then I know that the roots of the indicial equation I'll get are 1 over 2 and negative 1 over 2 from result number 2 up here. These roots clearly differ by an integer, in fact their difference is 1. So now if I use result number 3 I can write down the first solution to Bessel's equation as just j1 half of x, which I can copy paste from result number 1 up here. I can also write down the second solution y2 as the following. Now the expression for y2 contains two sets of unknowns, the constant c and the coefficients a n. If I want to find these unknowns then I'll have to plug y2 into Bessel's ODE and solve. And to plug y2 into Bessel's ODE we're first going to have to determine its first and second derivative because these two derivatives show up in Bessel's equation. To simplify things I'm going to define alpha sub k as this constant in the first y2 series so the negative 1 to the k over 2 to the power 2k plus 1 over 2 times 1 over k factorial gamma of k plus 1 over 2 plus 1. In this case y2 would be given by this simplified expression. The first derivative of y2 can be found by using the product rule on this first summation term. So ln x times the derivative of the summation term plus the derivative of ln x times the summation term and then the rest of the derivative would just be found by simply differentiating the second summation term. We can simplify this first derivative just by moving this 1 over x inside the summation to get a more manageable expression. The second derivative can also be found by using a similar process to that used for finding the first derivative, involving the product rule and simple differentiation. You can now simplify the second derivative as well by putting the 1 over x back into the summation and this is what you'll end up with. We can simplify the second derivative even more. This 1 over 2 term in the second summation cancels this negative 1 over 2 term in the third summation. The 2k's also add together to give 4k and this 2k plus 1 over 2 times 2k minus 1 over 2 obviously becomes 4k squared minus 1 over 4. Now, we're ready to plug y2 and its derivatives into Bessel's equation. And here is what we end up with. We can simplify this expression further. Let's go back up and recall the first solution to the Bessel equation for half integer order, this y1. Remember also that we defined alpha sub k as this quantity to make our writing simpler. 
So that means we can write our y1 as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of alpha sub k times x to the power 2k plus 1 over 2, where I've moved the x to the power 0 0.5 inside the summation. Now let's take the first and second derivatives of y1. The first derivative is just the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of alpha sub k times 2k plus 1 half times x to the power 2k minus 1 half. And the second derivative of y1 is just the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of alpha sub k times 4k squared minus 1 over 4 times x to the power 2k minus 3 over 2. Now let's go back to the expression for Bessel's equation we got when we plugged in y2. You can see that this first expression is just c ln x times x squared times y1 double prime. Similarly, this fourth expression is just c ln x times x times y1 prime while the seventh expression is just c ln x times x squared minus 1 over 4 y1. But we already know that y1 is the solution to Bessel's equation, so x squared y1 double prime plus x y1 prime plus x squared minus 1 over 4 y1 is just 0. So what we can do is cancel out these terms since they obviously add to 0. I mean, there is an extra c ln x multiplying them, but it multiplies all of them, so it can just be factored out. And when you cancel these terms, you end up with a simpler expression for the differential equation. Let's just move the x squared and x back inside the summation, and let's expand out this x squared minus 1 over 4 term. Now we're going to expand this n minus 1 over 2 times n minus 3 over 2 term, and we'll get n squared minus 2n plus 3 over 4. And here comes the fun part. Notice that the second term, this fourth term, and this sixth term all start at n equals 0. They all have the same power on x, and they all contain the same capital A sub n. So what we can do is just combine them to get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of capital A sub n times n times n minus 1 times x to the power n minus 1 over 2. The n equals 0 and n equals 1 terms here are both 0 in this summation. So we can just start the whole thing at n equals 2 and it wouldn't matter because this capital A n is already multiplying n times n minus 1. So at n equals 0, it's going to be 0. And at n equals 1, it's also going to be 0. So we can just start it at n equals 2. Let's now go back up to the simplified differential equation. Look at the terms involving c now. These guys start at the same k. They have the same power on x and both of them have alpha sub k in them. So let's combine them to get c times the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of alpha sub k times 4k plus 1 times x to the power 2k plus 1 over 2. All that's left now is adding the remaining term and equating everything to 0. Now as far as this remaining term is concerned, we can just change the index from n to a new dummy index, m minus 2, in which case our sum just becomes the sum from m equals 2 to infinity of a sub m minus 2 times x to the power m minus 1 over 2. We can now change the m back to the n, shift the summation involving c to the right hand side, and combine our summations on the left. And our equation becomes the following. Now we can actually start solving it after all this work. To solve this equation for c and capital A sub n, we do a power by power comparison. What that means is we compare like powers on both sides and equate their coefficients. We'll get a bunch of equations involving capital C and capital A sub n, which can then be solved. To do this power by power comparison, we're going to start with the lowest possible power on x, which is 1 over 2. On the right side, we'll get negative c times alpha naught times the square root of x. But on the left, we'll just get 0 because there's no x to the 1 over 2 term on the left. Now, alpha sub 0 isn't necessarily 0, and neither is the square root of x. So the only possibility is that c equals 0. This is actually very good because the fact that c is 0 makes our solution a lot simpler. All we're left with is the following equation in terms of capital A sub n. Because the summation is completely zero, the coefficients in the summation must be zero as well, so we end up with a recursion relation that looks something like this. We can just rearrange this recursion relation to get an equation involving capital A sub n. And that equation is capital A sub n equals negative A sub n minus 2 divided by n times n minus 1. Now this recursion relation is interesting. Every coefficient capital A sub n is related to a coefficient that's two terms behind. 
so to capital A sub n minus 2, which means that A sub 2, for example, has no direct relation to A sub 1. This allows us to set up two separate series of recursion relations. The first series involves even index coefficients, and the second involves odd index coefficients. The even branch starts at n equals 2, while the odd branch starts at n equals 3. So let's start by looking at the even branch. For n equals 2, we have capital A sub 2 equals negative 1 times capital A sub 0 over 2 times 1. And for n equals 4, we have capital A sub 4 equals negative 1 A sub 2 over 4 times 3, which is just negative 1 squared times A naught over 4 factorial. We can eventually notice a pattern according to which a sub 2j equals negative 1 to the j times a naught over 2j factorial. I'll leave it as a very simple exercise to show that the same pattern applies to the odd index coefficients, in which case a sub 2j plus 1 is negative 1 to the j times a1 over 2j plus 1 factorial. Using these two coefficient formulas, we can write our final expression for the second solution to Bessel's equation of half integer order. Do these sums look familiar? They should, because one of them is just the power series for cosine, while the other is just the power series for sine. Now, meanwhile, the first solution to Bessel's equation for half integer order is just y1, which we know from before. Note that we've taken out the square root of 2 from the summation and rewritten y1. I'm going to now do something interesting here. I'm going to re-express this gamma function in y1 and write out the entire expansion for it. We actually know from the gamma function video that the gamma of k plus 3 over 2 can just be written as k plus 1 over 2 times k minus 1 over 2 times all the way to 2 plus 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 times the gamma of 1 over 2. Now this 2 to the power 2k in the denominator is just 2 to the power k times 2 to the power k. We'll take one of these 2 to the power k's and multiply it with the expanded gamma function. And since there are k terms from k plus 1 over 2 to 1 plus 1 over 2, and since 2 to the power k is just 2 multiplied itself k times, we'll get the following. Now the other 2 to the power k can just multiply k factorial, and that would give us 2k times 2k minus 2 times all the way to 2. And since both of these expressions, the one involving the k factorial and the one involving the gamma function are being multiplied together, we can combine them to get 2k plus 1 factorial times 1 over 2 gamma of 1 over 2. And since gamma of 1 over 2 is the square root of pi, see the previous video, we can write the expression for y1 as the following. Let's take out the 2 over square root of pi and then multiply by x inside the summation and divide by x outside the summation. And guess what? This summation term is just sine x. Now the Bessel equation is a linear ODE, so any linear combination of the two solutions y1 and y2 will still be a solution. So let's rewrite our second solution as the old second solution minus a1 times the square root of pi over 2 times y1. And if we simplify this, we'll just eliminate the sine from the old y2 and be left with just the cosine. Of course, we can set a0 to be the square root of 2 over pi, and so we'll have these two solutions to our Bessel's equation, one involving sine and the other involving cosine. Both of them are linearly independent, they're not multiples of each other, so they can serve as our basis solutions to the Bessel equation for half integer order. Now in many cases it's common practice to write y1 as j sub 1 over 2 of x, while y2 is often written as j sub negative 1 over 2 of x. And that's it. You now have the solutions to Bessel's equation for half integer order. They're just simple functions involving sine and cosine. Now there's an easier way to derive these by differentiating j sub 1 over 2, but I wanted to do the longer way in this video because 1. It's good practice for applying the Frobenius method to solutions where the roots of the indicial equation differ by an integer. And two, I haven't derived the derivative and integral formulas for Bessel functions yet. I might do it in a later video if people want. Anyway, that should do it for this video. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and this is the Faculty of Khan signing out.